Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John and it's time for another episode of Rapid Reviews, the show where I put 60 seconds on the clock and then I tear through my thoughts on new EPs, singles, and album releases. This time, I've got 11 new ones to talk about already. This series is going to probably start becoming more active. And also, just a little side note, previously in the past six months or so, I have not been scripting this series. I've been going off the cuff, and I just am not as proud of the show as I had been in the past. So I'm going back to scripting it to make sure that I don't waste time, and I want to get all of my thoughts out because I've only got 60 seconds. i got to make it the best it can be. You're support for this show means the world to me. Please help out by dropping a like on this video. A like helps YouTube know to send it out to more people. It allows me to cover more things in one concise video because I can't do dedicated reviews for every single song, EP, or album that drops, so rapid reviews is a great way for me to do that. Anyways, we're going to dive right into it. Subscribe and join the neighborhood if you happen to be new, and we're going to start off by talking about the new Stand Atlantic single. Although the vocals feel way too processed, it's hard to deny how much of a jam the new Stand Atlantic tune is. I'm happy to see them chasing the avenue of retro pop punk continuing down that path on the irresistible Hate Me Sometimes. It's instantly catchy, the guitars are lively enough to make any crowd bounce, and the drumming rounds out the mix in addition to their newly added full-time bassist, which helps minimize some of the issues I had with the vocals. Bonnie is a really talented vocalist, it just seems that the producers really love to layer on the amount of vocal takes that they do, and at this point, I can't even tell how many vocal tracks there are on top of one another. It's really not that big of a deal, I guess, when the energy and dynamic is clearly working for the talented Aussie band. I just wish we'd get more moments like the closing section of the track that cools it down to a light guitar and raw vocals. I'm feeling a three and a half on this one. It definitely still rips and has gotten plenty of plays out of me. Step aside, Cardinal Copia. There's a new pop star in town. Ghosts are really just all over the rock and metal map at this point, and I couldn't be more intrigued with the results. The two new songs from the 7-inch single Seven Inches of Satanic Panic are definitely killing it with their magnetic 60s-leaning melodies. I mean, Kiss the Go-Goat? These guys are clearly having a hell of a time, and who can fault them when the music sounds this good? It's certainly not for the faint of heart metal purists that don't tolerate their explorations, but my god, the organ blended in with a classic guitar tone? Eat your meal, Timmy. I know it's not what grandma normally feeds you, but trust me, it's good for you. Strong four for the 7-inch single as a whole, Mariana Cross just feels like a hype-up anthem for a satanic choir somewhere in a medieval castle, and I'm here for it. Hey -o, we got an album that a Patreon supporter suggested to me, and I figured that I would include it here in Rapid Reviews. Thank you, Brandon Berenfeld. So The Raven Age are a British melodic metalcore band that recently went through some lineup shifts, but the biggest thing to note here is that George Harris is on guitars, and he's the son of Iron Maiden bassist Steve Harris. Musically, this album was surprisingly catchy and refreshing at least some of the time. It does hit a lot of the familiar beats of the genre and the surrounding influences, including some of the slowdowns and explosions, but the payoffs are definitely gripping enough to merit a recommendation. Their vocalist clearly has plenty of talent to go around, which really sold me on sticking around, so for that and the headbanging music that does feel pretty heavily inspired by Avenged and Trivium, I'll rate this at three and a half. Refreshing, authentic, and extremely memorable, it's just so good to see the synth-pop trio churches once again embracing their roots after a slight miscalculation of their strengths on 2018's Love is Dead. So this song Death Stranding is, bear with me, you're not gonna believe this, a song for the video game soundtrack for Death Stranding. Wow. Loosely taking on the concept of the open world game, Lauren Mayberry's angelic voice guides the idea of an unknown future, making it feel relevant far beyond something just half-assed for a soundtrack appearance. The synths here are absolutely gorgeous, as is the melody and longer runtime of the tune, which is greatly appreciated. Turn the lights down low, let your imagination fly, and spin through their world for more than five minutes. Speaking of fives, I got five on this one, because Death Stranding is a diamond. Thank you. 
Keen continue to be Keen even after seven years away without an album. The style and writing feels rather clunky and outdated, yet a few of the tunes still manage to rise above and be memorable. It feels like the most boring aspects of Keen brought back to life for an unknown reason. I'm tossing a two and a half to cause and effect and let the record show that these are the kind of comeback albums that aren't gonna matter to anybody but the lifelong fans. Poppy has been shooting straight up flames for all of 2019 and following up her excellent EP Choke and even the single Concrete, we have the title track here, I Disagree, from her upcoming album that I'm now incredibly excited for. The title track has some of the most insanely catchy metal-tinged riffs I've heard all year. Poppy's vocal tone fluctuates and demands answers from an unnamed label exec or group, making the song feel both confrontational and really cathartic. Blow off that steam, girl! Headbanging to Poppy. I don't care how weird that sounds on paper. This is a jam and a fucking half right here that I can't stop playing. The backing band deserves a ton of credit as well because the music alongside the presence of Poppy makes this a perfect five. I reluctantly went to check out the new Niall Horan single, not expecting much of anything after his meandering debut album Flickr that came out in 2017, but I'll be damned if this isn't one of the more enjoyable pop rock songs I've heard all year. Niall seems to have found new inspirations with Nice to Meet ya, something that probably could have dropped in the middle of the 90s Britpop movement, and I wouldn't bat an eye. It's indeed got the soaring melodies of a time we're now almost three decades away from, featuring some slick detailed bass grooves with a relentlessly infectious piano and Niall's steady voice. Although it does feel familiar, it doesn't feel too familiar, at least to me. Whatever the secret recipe is, it works as his new single scores a smashing 4 out of 5. Bayside are one of the most consistent bands on the block. It's that friend that always comes through for you and never lets you down. And Tarot Bang is no exception to that, featuring a live wire of a title track, some biting lyrics that carve out a unique perspective on today's societal struggles, and of course the man, the myth, the legend, Jack O'Shea, providing some delectable guitar licks even on the slower songs. Even though Vacancy wasn't a bad album, I definitely consider this to be a step up on most fronts. I feel that this album still finds Bayside as the underdogs even two decades into their career. You gotta check out at the very least the blazing Numb, Prayers, Heaven, and the closing track White Flag, but really, you're not gonna regret it if you just take the time to play through this album in full. It absolutely deserves it. I'm giving Intero Bang a 4, and its title gets a 5, because this grammar appreciator over here definitely appreciates the nod. Two bonus songs here from the Nothing Happens sessions, and I'm shaking my head, wondering to myself, why the hell were they left off the album? They're great! Trustfall is the weaker of the two, but it's still stacking up to be very memorable with its key-driven atmosphere and guitar-filled lead into the chorus that feels straight out of the 90s. Just like a movie shapes up to be one of the best Wallows songs to date. I mean, the guitar just does not leave my head. Dylan and Brayden both get a chance to showcase their vocals and help the song lift off, but the music here is unmatched with a dominating guitar, sci-fi leading synth, and a hell of a finale that feels like a huge payoff that we really deserved. I'm gonna give Trustfall a four, and just like a movie, a four and a half. Here we have an innocent enough bystander of a pop song that barely has any traces of country, even though Dan and Shay really seem to act like they're doing something for that genre. Justin Bieber officially got married, I thought he was already married, but I guess this was the official ceremony, and now he's got a feature where he talks about putting in the work to make a relationship not fall through the cracks. And this song is certainly better than some of the other cash-grabby features that he's turned in lately. <laughs> Bad guy! Let's just hope that his focus shifts off of these features and actually on to his new upcoming solo studio album, whenever that might be. As far as the rating goes for this song, eh, I'm not gonna remember this by the end of the year. I'll give it a light three.
Rapper Travis Scott addresses his relationship struggles with Kylie Jenner on Highest in the Room, a guitar-laden cut that sort of smolders and gets a bit of a fire going, but leaves you feeling a bit more teased than anything else. Not a bad track here by any means. I appreciate the atmospheric momentum his producers are able to carry in addition to Travis's auto-tuned voice, which to be honest is getting a little bit tired at this point, but I also can't deny the fact that I do like it enough to give it a three and a half. I think there's more good than bad. That's it for this episode of Rapid Reviews. If there's other singles, EPs, or albums that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then let me know in the comment section down below. Remember, I'm not listening to as many full-length albums just for my own personal sanity, and I am using this to cover more singles and EPs really than anything else. But thanks again for tuning in. Please do me a favor, hit the like button on this video. It helps support this series immensely. You can catch up on more episodes of Rapid Reviews because I do get a lot of requests for things that I have actually already covered in this series. So check out the playlist. There should be a card right here or else a link in the description. You can check out another full-length review right over here. All of my social media accounts, including my Instagram, go follow me there, are linked in the description down below. New merch out now, and I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.